Watch out, uh, we have nitro cells in the radio room. Oh, that's quite a lot. Man, this is just taking too long. Oh, you're putting up a cluster charge? Uh, yeah. Grenade out? Well, at least I got one nitro cell. Mission success! What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and I'm back with another level of Rainbow Six Siege, this time we're looking at Canal. As you can see from the map, this is quite a large level involving two buildings that are connected and a significant outdoor area. As attacker, you have three spawn point choices, the floating dock in the northwest, the sailboats in the southwest, and the construction site in the northeast. There are no outdoor cameras to worry about, but there are a lot of windows that offer lines of sight covering the attacker approaches. From the control center alone, you can cover most of the northern part of the map, and once you add other windows and doors on both floors to it, there's not a lot of safe areas left outside, especially when you consider that a lot of the rest of the map is not actually accessible. Here, let me show you which areas are actually safe. Of course, when you're playing against NPCs, this doesn't really matter unless you make a lot of noise outside, but if you're playing against a switched-on human team, be ready for some trouble. And with that, let's finally take a closer look at the target buildings themselves. We'll start today on the ground floor. In this level, we have two target buildings, the Coast Guard on the left, or the west, and the Control Center on the right of the map, the east. Both buildings have very limited ground floor areas with limited access from the outside. The Coast Guard building has one door in the north and one in the south, while the control center has two doors in the garage which is open to the outside, and one door in the east. Alternatively, you can also smash your way in through the wall that is on the northern side of the Coast Guard building underneath the boat crane roof. If you are already in either of the two buildings, you can use the stairs to make your way down, or, in case of the Coast Guard Center, you can use the two ceiling breach points. Once you're inside the buildings, you will find a CCTV camera covering the boat supplies hallway. And, in case you're running low on ammo, look to the boat supplies room. And with that, we're finally ready to take a closer look at what this level looks like in the game. So this is us now approaching from the northwestern spawn point, the floating docks. As with all other spawn points, you can see that this initial area is quite safe. Uh, we cannot be seen or fired upon from the enemy buildings. But as soon as we come around this corner, you can see the windows of the control center to the left. And the door of the Coast Guard building above us here could also be used as a firing point. As you can see, the boat crane area is still outdoors, even though it is considered to be part of the Coast Guard building. As an attacker, you are quite vulnerable here, since anyone in the control center loading dock has a clear shot at you at all times. Entering into the boat garage, you're initially quite safe if you're coming in through the doorway, since you have an impenetrable wall to your left and right. Once you get into the room properly, though, this becomes a different matter. You have two open doorways, both east and south, and breachable walls to the north and southeast. Next, we have the boat supplies room, which is again relatively open, with breachable walls to the south and northeast, and a central ceiling breach point. This is also the only room on the ground floor where you will find spare ammo. The leaking pipes room to the south of the boat supplies is quite unremarkable. An open doorway in the northwest and a fully breachable wall in the east are its only features. If you do run into any trouble in the boat supplies room, the metal life preserver shelves will at least offer some cover. Now let's head out into the boat supplies hallway which runs the entire length of the Coast Guard building. As you can see, there is very little cover except maybe underneath the stairs. The eastern, northern and southern walls of the hallway are solid and only some walls in the west are breachable. This doorway here leads to the southern approach but is below ground level. Oh, and we have a bomber. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna catch up, but, but whatever you do, don't lead him to me. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Close one. Cover me. Reloading. Be aware that this hallway is covered by a camera that is just opposite the stairways here. The viewing angle may be fairly limited, but camera operators will be able to see the full length of the corridor. The bottom of the Coast Guard stairs can also be observed. 
Moving swiftly on to the showers area, we can see that this room is solid all the way around, and the only way in and out is through the doorways to the north and southwest. Both the toilet and the shower cubicles can act as ambush points. The shower's corridor is very narrow and offers no cover whatsoever. The locker bank in the centre of the locker room can act as cover, but do take care over the ceiling breach point in the southwest of the room. And with that, we're back in the hallway and we've come full circle. Time to check out the control centre. This is the control centre stairs room, which is completely solid and only accessible via this doorway to the north. Well, apart from the stairs themselves, of course. The doorway to the north leads to the loading dock which is an open garage area that allows defenders to target any attackers underneath the boat crane. And of course, anyone in the open in between the two buildings or looking out of the windows of the Coast Guard building. The concrete pillars and the white van in this room offer some limited cover. The final room on the ground floor of this building is the machine hallway. Solid walls all round and a doorway to the east and west. Simple. And with that, we have the ground floor covered. Time to check out the first floor map. As you can see, breaching the first floor from the outside is quite a different matter compared to the ground floor. There are a total of 25 different doors and windows all around both buildings, and there is a breachable wall in the southern part of the Coast Guard building. If you're already inside the buildings, you can of course come up the stairs from the ground floor or down from the second floor. If you're on the second floor already, you will have the option of breaching down through the floor breach points, one above the security room, one above the projector room, and one above the kitchen. To get down to the first floor using breach points, you can use the one in the lounge to get down to the locker room, or the one in the Coast Guard office to get to the boat supplies room. Spare ammunition can be found both in the Coast Guard office and in the maps office, if you're an attacker, beware of the two cameras, one in the Coast Guard hallway and one in the Maps Office hallway. As always, I'll be showing you a view of these as we pass them in the game. And with that, let's go! First up, let's check out the holding room. Brick pillars and metal shelves offer some cover in this room, but be aware that almost all of the inner walls of the room are fully breachable. In fact, the only safe piece of wall is here to the left of the doorway. The two windows in the holding room hallway here look as if they might be breachable, but they are in fact barred from the outside. They do make decent shooting ports though for defenders covering the northwest of the map. To the south of the holding room is the Coast Guard radio room, and what better way to get there than straight through the wall? Breaching charges up. Ready? Breaching! Wow, I managed to get a kill assist and hit my buddy three times. Now that takes some skill. The radio room has a window to the west and solid walls apart from the one to the north. There's a window going through to the Coast Guard office and the doorway will actually get you there as well. The Coast Guard office is a relatively large room with two windows to the west, a breachable wall in the north and east which lead to the hallway and a breachable wall to the south going into the archives. Furthermore, there are also doorways leading south and east. Right ahead of us here is the floor breach point leading down to the boat supplies. Be aware that while the metal desks offer some hard cover, the cork dividers above them do not. You can hide behind them, but the enemy will still be able to shoot you. If you're running low on ammo, this room will also be the place where you can fill up. To the south of the office are the archives. To reach these, you can either use the doorway or the breachable wall. The room is basically just a fairly short corridor, with solid walls apart from the one exception, and a window facing south. The cabinets along the walls offer only minor cover. To the east, we have the main entrance area with a counter that provides chest-high cover. The room has a large double door to the south and a window in the east. Be aware that the doorway to the north here is covered by a metal detector so that when you move through it will set off an alarm. Rather than triggering this alarm, you might prefer to breach through the northern wall or head through the archives instead. Back in the office, we'll now explore the Coast Guard hallway. The western side of the corridor can be breached at several points while the eastern side is solid. And apart from that, there's, there's not really much to say. It connects the rooms. 
The lounge is far more interesting. A small room, solid walls all around, two windows facing east. Plus, you have the floor breach point leading down into the lockers area. Here, a quick view at the staircase and jump cut back to the hallway. This corner right here is where you'll find one of the cameras. From here, you can survey the entire Coast Guard hallway, including the stairs and the bridge, all the way across into the model room. And with that, it's time to head over to the control center. The two buildings are conveniently connected by a bridge which has two breachable windows both north and south. Since you are in a narrow corridor though, with no cover, it can be risky crossing the bridge. The first room you come to once you cross the bridge is the model room, named after the beautifully detailed model of the buildings in the center of the room. Apart from this model case, the room is quite unremarkable, with solid walls all round and two windows facing south. Continuing onwards, you'll come to the map's office hallway and the control center stairs. This is once again where you will find one of the CCTV cameras covering the hallway and the stairs. This section of the hallway has two wall breaches in the north and a doorway in between. If you run into any uh, resistance getting into the map's room from here, an alternative way can be through the security room. The security room is wide open with breachable walls to the north and one breachable wall to the south in this corner that can allow you to blow your way all the way through from the corridor to the map's office or the projector room in the north. That is, unless the enemies have fortified the walls. A single window in the west offers access to the security room from the outside and it also has a ceiling breach point. If storming straight into the map's office is still not an option, you can try going through the map's archive instead. This small hub room has breachable walls to the north, east and south, plus a doorway west into the map's room. Take care of the wooden floor in these areas though, since it can make you vulnerable to fire from below. Now we're quickly passing through the map's office here, but let me show you the projector room first. This room in the northwest of the building has two windows facing west, and a breachable wall in the south. Also take note of the ceiling breach point above us right now. Back in the maps room, you will notice the two breachable walls in the south of the room and the one in the southeast heading through to the kitchen. This room can be entered from the outside of the building through a single window in the northeastern corner. A large metal desk in the center of the room provides some limited cover, as long as you duck of course, and if required, you can also stock up on ammo here. Apart from the breachable wall, the kitchen has two windows and a ceiling breach point. The kitchen is directly connected to the cafeteria and we'll come back in a second. First, the plant's hallway. Apart from an unusual name, this hallway has doorways facing north and south and a window in the south. Back to the cafeteria and you may have noticed that it looks as if there is a window on the eastern wall. This is in fact blocked from the outside. The western wall ahead from me now is fully breachable and leads through to the map's archive. And this completes our tour of the first floor. On to the second. The second floor of the Coast Guard building is mainly the roof and you have access to the second floor of the control center by crossing over the roof of the bridge. To enter from the outside you have a choice of 10 doors and windows and there's also a breachable wall on the southern side of the control center. As before, you will be able to make your way up from the floor below using the two staircases. Even though the barricades on the control center windows can be completely destroyed, these windows are marked as semi-breachable since you cannot pass through them. The lack of roof anchor points in this section means that you can neither abseil down from these windows or get up to them. Since this is the topmost floor, there are no ceiling breach points, but there are three different floor breaches in the control center. The one in the server room leads down to the kitchen, the one in the northern part of the control room leads down to the projector room, and the one in the southern part of the control room leads down to the security room. Ammunition can be found in the control room, and defending teams will have access to a CCTV camera in the control room hallway. And with that, let's check this floor out in the game. Eliminate the terrorists. Starting from the construction site in the east of the map, you can see that as soon as we come up this bank, the control center has an open field of fire on us. Playing against bots, this will not be an issue, but if you're playing against humans, it might be worth using the construction site offices as cover initially. Climbing up the southeastern side of the building will lead you up to the balcony. 
From here you have access to two windows. The one in the east will lead you into the server room. While this one here in the south leads to the control room hallway. If you're not in any particular hurry, you can use the drone access port just to the right and below the window to scout out the hallway before breaching in. The control room hallway itself is very simple. A straight corridor with solid walls and two doors leading north, one leading west. I can hear trouble. Here, why don't you chew on this, guys? Whoa! -ho -ho, boom! Okay then, it seems as if the coast is clear, time to move on. Heading through the doorway to our north will bring us to the server room. The server room is relatively large and open with only a couple of server banks in the center. To the west here you'll have a breachable wall leading through to the control room. And there are two windows to the north and one doorway in the east. As mentioned before, there is a floor breach point right here, which will lead down into the kitchen. The doorway in the northwestern corner of this room leads into the electric room. This small room offers zero cover and has breachable walls running all the way down the western side. You can choose to come through either into the northern part of the control room or the southern part. The control room is a large room that can be considered as having three separate parts. The central part we are in right now has two desks that can offer cover, and depending on your game mode this is also where you will find the ammunition. There are two windows leading to the outside facing west. The two breachable walls in the east we've already discovered. Oh no he's closer, that was the wrong move! Oh, <laughs> and my grenade still killed a guy! Oh well, I guess, I guess all's well that ends well? Time to check out the northern part of the room. This floor breach point here leads down into the projector room. The central feature to this room is the console bank that you can see ahead of us just now. This offers both cover and concealment so be aware of enemies lurking behind. As I mentioned right in the beginning of the video, the large windows of the control room offer great sight lines for defenders. From here you can target attackers approaching from the construction site in the northeast and the floating docks in the northwest almost as soon as they start moving towards you. It's worth being cautious as a defender though since snipers on the attacking team also have a clear line of sight to you. The southern part of the control center is almost a room all to itself. Still under construction, both the southern and eastern wall are made of wood and fully breachable. Here, let me show you what I mean. The breachable room to the east leads to a small room called the third floor exit, which then leads on to the corridor. It is in this corner where you will also find the last CCTV camera. This will allow you to view the entire corridor plus the middle part of the stairway. The third floor exit itself is quite unremarkable, a small room with a solid wall in the north and east, and a doorway to the south, and a soft wall in the west. Back in the control room, the floor breach point will lead down into the security room. While the southern wall can be blown up to reach an area of the roof known as the Roof Brick Pile. Even though the brick pile is only made up of cinder blocks, this will provide you both sight and solid cover. The roof brick pile area includes the roof of the bridge, and this gives you access to the Coast Guard roof. But of course this is not the only way you can get here. You can climb up the walls around the entire building, or you can make your way up the Coast Guard stairs. At the top here you will find a doorway and a window. And with that our tour of the canal level is complete. Please be aware that while the maps used in this video are based on the ones released by Ubisoft, I have made some significant changes both for accuracy and detail. If you fancy studying these maps in your own time, there will as always be a download link in the description below. I have quite a few more Rainbow Six videos in the pipeline. Like and subscribe to stay up to date with my most recent releases. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next episode.